So we have seen the recursion tree method, right, in the previous video, right, where we actually drew this graphical structure, wherein we break it down and then we use geometric series or ideas like that to actually solve the problem. There is a more formulaic method called the master theorem. It's, it makes life simpler. If you can remember formulae, master theorem is super good. Of course, there is a very nice rigorous proof of master theorem that we will not be going into in this course because it's slightly non-trivial. But uh, let, let's understand the master theorem itself, right? So imagine master theorem works, first of all, if you have recurrence relations like this, if t of n is equal to a into t of n by b, right, plus some function f of n. If you have your recurrence relations of this form, wherein a is greater than or equal to 1 and b is greater than 1. In these situations, okay, if, if, if your recurrence relation falls into this format, then we can solve master theorem in, in various cases. So let's take case 1 first. Okay. So there are three cases of master theorem if, if your recurrence relation of this form and let's see the case 1. Case 1 says if f of n that you have here. Again, I'll explain this with an example again. First, let me write down the cases. If f of n is big O of order of n log a base b minus epsilon for some, for some epsilon greater than 0, then I'll explain this, I'll, this. The notation looks confusing. Bear with me. I'll surely explain this for you. Right? Then it says t of n is equal to theta of n log a base b. Okay. Let me explain this. Let's take an example. Okay. That that will make life easy. Imagine if you have. Okay. Imagine if you have t n equals to. Okay. Nine t n by three plus n. Okay. Imagine this is the recurrence relation that is given to you. Now, here what is A? Let's try to find what A is. A is 9. Right? What is B? B is 3. A is greater than or equal to 1. B is greater than 1. Satisfied. Right? What is F of n here? F of n is equal to n. Right? What is F of n here? F of n is equal to n. Now, let's see this condition. So, this, this looks like an equation of this form. Okay, but let's see if this condition is satisfied. So the first thing is this looks of the form, this recurrence relation looks like this form, which is good. And A is greater than or equal to 1 and B is greater than 1. So it satisfies all of these conditions. Now let's see if it satisfies this. What is f of n? So let's solve this RHS here, right? What is log A base B? Okay, which is log 9 base 3. 3 square is 9. So log 9 base 3 is going to be 2 because 3 power 2 equals to 3. That's the definition of logarithms, right? Right? 3 square equals to 9. So log 9 base 3 equals to 2. Very simple. Nothing very complex here. Now, what does it say? If f of n, see, look at this. Look at what it says. It says, if f of n, if f of n is equal to this. Now, let's see what is f of n. Our f of n is, is equal to n. What is order of n power log 9 base 3 minus some epsilon. What does this mean? This means order of n 2 minus epsilon. Now, what do you have here? You have f of n equals to n. What do you have here? Let's say epsilon equal to 1. Let, let. Because for some epsilon, see, this, this should be true for some epsilon. For some epsilon, if this is true, we are cool. Now, as long as the epsilon is greater than 0. If epsilon equals to 1, if epsilon equals to 1, what happens here? f of n equals to n. So f of n is equal to n. This is the LHS. What, what's happening on the RHS? If epsilon is equal to 1, right? My RHS says this is big O of 1. Big O of n per 1, sorry. Because 2 minus 1 is 1, right? Now, your LHS, which is n, is, is order of n per 1 or order of n. Makes sense, right? Your n is upper bounded by n. Makes complete sense. Your any function, right? C of n. This this is this is common sense, right? C this is n power 1. This is from the definition of big O. From the definition of big O, your f of n now is big O of 2 power, sorry, n power 2 minus epsilon, where epsilon equals to 1. 
So it is satisfying this condition also. Look at the two conditions it's satisfying. It is satisfying the first condition that it is of this form and A is greater than or equal to 1 and B is greater than 1. And your f of n, which is this part, your f of n is, is big O of n power log A base B minus epsilon for some epsilon. As long th as that is true, you can conclude that your Tn, the solution of your recurrence relation, as long as that is true, your solution to your recurrence relation is theta of n power, what is log A base B? n square. Right? So the solution for this recurrence relation is equal to this. See how easy, I have not drawn anything here. Imagine if I were to draw this, if I were to draw this, I have to say, this, this is broken down into 9 values of n by 3, n by 3, n by 3, 9 values of n by 3 like this, right? And then I'll take order of n to combine all of them. Again, this will be broken up into 9 values further. So drawing the recurrence tree here, because a problem of size n is getting broken down into 9 problems of size n by 3, right? So this is a little tricky. But applying the master theorem case 1 is straightforward here. It's extremely simple, right? Because, see, this is the formula, this is the formulaic way of solving a recurrence relation. It is very handy if you can remember these formulae, right? And these are not rocket science. You'll just get used to it very, very quickly. So as long as your, your recurrence relation looks like this, and as long as this satisfies, you can directly answer what, uh, you can directly answer about the, uh, about the form of, your uh, the solution of your recurrence relation you can directly answer so what did we do we said a is this b is this f of n we checked so we are basically checking we are saying we are just replacing a replacing b and we said f of n satisfies this and hence this is my solution problem solved right so this is a formulaic way extremely simple way extremely powerful also that is case one now let's go and look at case two right so even in case two, it has to satisfy this. See, this has to be satisfied. Otherwise, you can't apply master theorem. So every time this has to be satisfied, right? And in case two, if f of n, if f of n is theta of, if f of n is theta of n, sorry, sorry, not n log here. In the, in the exponent, it has to be log, sorry. n log a base b which means your f of n is bounded. See, what does theta mean? Theta means it's bounded both above and below by this. Okay, what does big O mean? Big O basically means it's bounded only above. Right, we've seen the definitions of what big O, theta and omega are, right? We've seen these, sorry. So we've seen these definitions, right? Big O, theta and omega. Big O basically means upper bounding. Theta basically means both upper bounding and lower bounding. And big, o, big theta basically means lower bounding, right? Here, if you notice, we have the upper bound type of formation. Here, if you see in this second formula, in the second case, if this is the case, then, then you can conclude that your T of n is theta of n log A base B multiplied by log, multiplied by, I don't have to use LOG, I can just say LG log n, right? So let's see, let's take an example. It's only with examples that you, you would grasp the concept, right? Imagine I have T of n equals to, okay, T 2n by 3, okay, 2n by 3 uh, plus 1, let's say, okay? Very simple. Okay, let me write this more, more crisply for you, okay? So if I have t of n equals to t 2n by 3 plus constant. Now let's see what our a, b, c are, right? Here, here your a is 1 because there is only 1 here. Nothing is getting multiplied. What is your b now? b is supposed to be in the denominator. So b is 3 by 2 because I can write this as n by 3 by 2. Okay. And what is your f of n? Your f of n is a constant 1. Right? Very simple. Now let's look at now. Now let's try to see. So this formula that we have here fits into this formula. It fits into this. Right? Because what do you have? You have A is greater than or equal to 1. Right? And B greater than 1. You have that. You already have that. Very, very simple. Nothing complex here. Right? So it fits into this formula. 
Now let's see if this satisfies this case. Okay, let's let's see. So what is n power log a base b? What is the what is it equivalent to? N power okay log of 1 base 3 by 2. That's what it is, right? Right? So if you see this, see log of 1 with any base equals to 0. Look at this. Log of 1 with any base is equal to 0. Any base you have. Any base because a power 0 equals to 1. <laughs> right? Because, because of this formula, this thing will become 0. So this is n power 0, which is a constant. What does n power 0 mean? n power 0 is basically 1. So what you have here is your this formula. So what, what, where, when, when can we use case 2? If f of n is theta of this. So what does theta of this mean? What is our f of n? What is our LHS? Our LHS is f of n, which is 1. And what is our RHS? Theta of this. And what is this? This is nothing but 1. So 1 is theta of 1. That's obviously trivial. If you have something of constant time, it is bounded both above and below by constant time. Right? So this thing, this, so this formula, if you have this recurrence equation or recurrence relation, it fits into the format of the master theorem. It fits into this format of master theorem. And very importantly, it fits into case 2. Right? Because it fits into case 2, we can conclude that t of n is equal to theta of n power log a base b. What is log n power log a base b? 1. Constant. So 1 into log of n, which is nothing but theta of log of n. Very simple. So if you have a, if you have a recurrence relation like this, the solution to the recurrence relation is that t of n is theta of log n. So this is case 2. Right? See, it's very, very simple. If you can remember these cases, and it's not hard. If you write down, remember, if you write down these cases, you will not forget them. Right? So it's not hard, but these are very, very handy. Because in some cases like this, like this case, you can't use the, uh, you can't use the re recursion tree method. So it's best to use the master theorem in those, those situations. Now, if there are case one, case two, there might be even case three. So let's go to case three, right? So case three works like this, okay? If f of n, again, we have the same thing. Your t of n should be a t n by b plus f of n, where a is greater than or equal to one and b is greater than one. This is the, this, without this, you can't apply master theorem, right? But what is case three? Let's see what case three is. Case three says if, if f of n is lower bounded by, which means it's omega of, right? n power log a base b plus some epsilon, right, where epsilon is greater than 0, right, if this is the case, if this is the case, so there exists some epsilon such that f of n is lower bounded by this and this condition is slightly more complicated and if a f of n by b, right, is less than equal to is less than equal to c into f of n for some c that is less than 1 but for all n it has to satisfy see in case 3 it of course it has to satisfy the master theorem formula or the form of the master theorem and it has to satisfy this condition and this condition then if this and this then you can say that t of n is theta of f of n Okay, let's, let's, let's see an example. Okay, let's see an example. I'll change the color here. Imagine if you have a problem like this. T of n is equal to 3t n by 4 plus n log n. Let's assume this is the recurrence relation we have, right? What is a here? a is equal to 3. b is equal to 4. f of n, f of n here is n log n. Right, So it satisfies all the conditions. This looks like your standard form. A is greater than 1, tick mark. B greater than 1, tick mark. Now let's look at these conditions. These conditions are the interesting part. Now let's see what is n power log a base b. Right. 
So what is now what is log a base b? Log a log a base b. So if you compute this, if you compute this, you'll get a value of 0.793. This is log 3 base 4. Okay. So what does so n power? So look at this, look at this. So if f of n, if f of n, what is our f of n? Our f of n is n log n. If n log n, if if n log n is lower bounded by or omega of n power this thing n power 0 0.793 plus some epsilon as long as the epsilon is greater than 0 see that's the only condition we have here right as long as epsilon is if i can find some epsilon where f of n look at this what is your f of n your f of n is n log n right imagine if if let's say let's say we have to find some epsilon right which is greater than 0 now let's say let's just assume that epsilon is roughly equal to 0.2 then what happens to this exponent this exponent becomes close to 1 because you have 0.793 plus 0.2 this is 0.993 which is roughly equal to 1 right so i can replace this so if 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 for some value of epsilon which is greater than 0 so if i take epsilon equals to 0.2 then this whole thing will become 1 I can erase that whole thing and say n power 1. Now the question here is, is n log n, right, lower bounded by, lower bounded by n? Of course, this is true. Your n log n grows faster than n. Your n log n grows faster than n. So n log n is big omega of n, obviously. This is lower bounded by n, that's obvious. So it satisfies this condition also. So it satisfies this condition. Now comes the other condition. The other condition says this. Okay, let's see. Let's see, let's see how we make it work. So now let's say a into f of n by b. Okay. So a into 3 into what is f of n by b? Right? F of n is n log n. Right? What is f of n by b? Right? Let's look it up. F of n by b is b is 4. So it is n by 4 log n by 4. That's what this is. Look at this. I'm just replacing. I'm just replacing a and b and the function. If this is less than equal to the second condition in the second condition, this is satisfied. This is satisfied. Now let's go to the, if this is less than equal to some constant into f of n for all n and for some constant c that is less than one. Can we find a constant here which is which which satisfies this? Now let's simplify this. If you simplify this, what do you get? You get three by four into n into log n by 4 right now this this is on the lhs right in the rhs if let's assume if let's assume i take c equals to 3 by 4 let 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 because i just need to ensure that c is less than 1 if i take c equals to 3 by 4 what happens here on the lhs on the rhs sorry it becomes 3 by 4 what is f of n n log n now 3 by 4 3 by 4 is the same n n is the same log n by 4 is always less than or equal to log n so this is so there exists some c right Th this is true for all n this is true for all n so there exists a value of c which is less than 1 which is equal to 3 by 4 such that this equation is also satisfied which means it satisfies this condition what does this condition say if a into f n by b is less than or equal to c into f of n if there exists if there exists some c which satisfies this for all n so this condition is also satisfied then t of n equals to theta of fn so in this case what happens your t of n will be your t of n will be theta of what is f of n n log n right very simple so here here is the fun part so the trick here to remember is in case one we have an upper bounding look at this in case one this this is a trick that i think that i always keep in mind right in case one if your f of n is upper bounded by n power log a base b minus epsilon for some epsilon right in case b or in case 2 you don't have any epsilon but you have a tight bound this is both upper and lower bounds in the third case in the third case what you have is a lower bound with plus epsilon okay and you have this special case I, when when i try to recall i often forget this case okay i mess up personally this is my personal thing okay 
So in master theorem, you have to remember each of these three cases. If you remember the three cases, it is just, just replacing these values of A, B and checking the lower bound or the tight bound or the upper bound, right? But the beauty of master theorem is if you can remember master theorem, it will simplify solving recurrences like crazy. It's a very, very elegant thing because when I, I recall that when I remembered, when I was preparing for GATE, I used to write master theorem, like even before the exam, I remember that I used to forget it. Oftentimes you'll get some recurrence relation that you can comfortably solve using master theorem. Okay. So I, oftentimes I used to remember everything, but I used to forget this condition. Of course, it, dif it differs from person to person, but it's fun to learn. And rem I mean, it, it's not very hard, truth be told. You can, if you just write it down on a piece of paper, digest it carefully, you'll remember everything.